Egbo, big. It's hatred. That's what it really is. We don't like them, they don't like us, and we both like that. You can't fight the friction. As fierce and nasty a rivalry as there is. The wind took it. It didn't even get to the goalpost. When you live here in Mississippi, this game means everything. Brothers and sisters, neighbor against neighbor. Parents and kids. You gotta be on one side or the other. I gotta get that trophy. No other game matters. They have their strong opinion about us, and we have their strong opinion about them. Now you're starting to feel what a rivalry game feels like. Under the lights at Davis Wade Stadium in Starkville, it's senior day. And number 18 Ole Miss coming to town some 90 miles to take on their rivals, Mississippi State. It's senior day and 15 players making their final appearance here on the turf. 15 players that took this program to unprecedented heights. And the beacon for them all, Dak Prescott, the best player in program history being introduced. From Houghton High School in Houghton, Louisiana, the owner of 38 school records, number 15, Dak Prescott. The love, tangible and palpable when you hold 38 school records. Mark Jones, Rod Gilmore, great to have you back. Quint Kesnick down on the field joining us in just a moment. This is the 112th edition of this rivalry. Rod, you can't characterize the enmity and the rancor that exists between these two schools 90 miles apart. Dak Prescott told us yesterday, I have no friends on Ole Miss. Yeah, don't be fooled by all the emotion for Dak Prescott. This rivalry is a good rivalry, but it's not a friendly rivalry. As you mentioned, he is not a fan, has no friends on the Mississippi side. Talked about how he learned about the rivalry because they made fun of his coach after they lost. There's a lot of emotion in this ballgame tonight. And a lot on the line for both these teams, including a potential berth in the Sugar Bowl. In a year, Rod, where the perception is that quarterback play might be down a little bit in the SEC, we have the two leaders in the conference at the position tonight. W without a doubt. We're talking about the two best quarterbacks in the SEC. One of these two guys will be the SEC Offensive Player of the Year, in my opinion. Great season, and they've been hot lately. Take a look at what Kelly did last week against LSU. 280 yards passing, responsible for four touchdowns, two on the ground, two through the air. And how about Prescott? Seven total touchdowns, five through the air, and about 300 plus yards passing. Total 504 yards of offense for him in that ball game. These two guys have to harness their emotions in the early part of this ball game. Especially Prescott, a poignant moment on senior night, but he's already grasped the magnitude of this game. Let's go down to Quint Kessinen. Mark, quarterback talent in this game is complemented by some outstanding wide receivers. Laquan Treadwell, Jr. from Ole Miss. He's one of three Bolitnikoff finalists, averaging six and a half catches per game. Really strong at the reception point. Playing this year at warp speed. Keep in mind, he didn't play in this game last year. Teranya Wilson, Mississippi State, red zone, 6-5, nine touchdowns. Ole Miss has small corners. Dak Prescott will be eyeing up Wilson in the red zone. A lot of talent on the field at that position, Quint. Ole Miss winning the toss, deferring to the second half. The Bulldogs, therefore, receiving the opening kick. And this place is turned up, folks. First and ten for Dak Prescott directing the offense here for Mississippi State. He's thrown for almost 3,200 yards on the season, completing 66% of his passes. 23 touchdown tosses against just three interceptions. Jonesy, he is in the middle of a hot streak. A couple of years ago, I wasn't convinced he'd be a great quarterback. He is playing lights out now. 
Had that big week last week you talked about. Responsible for seven touchdowns. And that thrilling victory against Arkansas. And he's going to toss it here on first down. Incomplete intended for his leading receiver, Fred Ross, working against Trey Elson. And it'll be second down and ten. We talked about his numbers last week. The challenge for Dak Prescott tonight early on, harnessing his emotions. You saw him emotional before the game. You know that he's got to get other people involved, but quieting himself is critical. Second and ten. Complete over the middle. And close to the first down came right back to Fred Ross, his leading receiver on the season. Depending on the spot, it's going to be third and very short, maybe half a yard to go. Going real fast on offense. That is their custom. Owning a third down and one. Prescott is the team's leading rusher this year as well. And not unusual to see that. He gets the first down and then some out to the 40-yard line. Now, Rod, there is a redemptive quality and quotient to this game when you talk about Prescott. In last year's Egg Bowl game, they lost, and he was just 22 of 37. He said he came back just to beat Ole Miss. Absolutely. That was his motivating factor and felt that he had a lot to prove in this game. First down and 10. Option toss out of the backfield. That's Holloway. Broke one tackle out beyond the 45. He comes in highly motivated when you look back and reflect on last year. Well, last year's egg ball was difficult. 22 of 37. Only one touchdown. And the most depressing thing for him was that Mississippi felt like they made him poor that night. The inaccurate throws. And Prescott on a predetermined run. Going to put his hat down and he fumbled it. He put it on the ground, and Ole Miss recovers. Thus, the first turnover of this emotionally charged game. Big hit by Demarcus Gates to jar that ball loose. Well, Jonesy, it's one of the things we talked about, harnessing your emotions early on. He sees the big hole, gets a little bit careless with the football, and it's popped out. Good drive going, doesn't cover it up. Ole Miss now with an advantage. First down and 10 for Prescott's counterpart, Chad Kelly. 6'2 junior out of Buffalo, New York. Started all 11 games this year for the 8-3 and three Ole Miss Rebels. Starting with pretty good field position, slings it complete in the middle of the field at the 44-yard line to Quincy Adeboyo. Working against Brandon Bryant. There's a look at his season numbers. 35.04 yards passing, 25 touchdown tosses against 12 interceptions. And he has started to run an awful lot the last several weeks, and that's added a huge dimension to this offense. Well, he hands it off here between the tackles down to the 42. It's Jalen Walton. Run for almost 600 yards this year. All at the 42. Kelly with time out of the backfield. Nice catch by Walton. Walton on his scooter. Down to the 27-yard line. It was Walton that had that big play in the third quarter last year to break the game open a little bit. 15-yard game. Hurry up, tempo offense. They want to go right back to the line of scrimmage. An excellent throw here, but they're going to go fast after picking up a first down. Out of the shotgun. Kelly keeps it and runs. Got a good set of wheels. Still on its feet. Touchdown, Ole Miss. Jonesy, we talked about his running skills. It's the added dimension over the last few weeks. He'll scramble in, in passing situations, but this is a design run. He gets a great block by Evan Ingram. The tight end springs him to the outside. That's his 10th rushing TD of the season. And the Rebels lead it 7 to nothing, capitalizing on the fumble by Dak Prescott. 
and an early 7-0 lead for Ole Miss against Mississippi State after that fumble by quarterback Dak Prescott as they were driving the ball down the field on their opening drive. He'll get another opportunity here in just a minute. I'm Mark Jones chopping it up with Rod Gilmore. Quick catching it down to the field. Related happy Thanksgiving from all of us to all of you at home. Great progression and development in his career. See how he bounces back. He's sacked back at the 18-yard line by Marquise Haynes. Working against Justin Sr. Haynes with his nine and a half sacks now in the season. Speed rush from the right side. Just goes completely around the outside. Gets there to make the tackle over Sr. And that puts a big second and 16 up there for the Bulldogs. Out of the shotgun again, Prescott. Short three-step drop complete to Donald Gray. And you think about where Prescott was as a retro freshman and a sophomore, just a short yardage quarterback and compared to what he is now, Rob. Yeah, a, a, a running guy, an athlete, and then slowly became a better quarterback. He told us yesterday that last summer was when he felt like the light bulb went on and he felt truly like a quarterback who could use his mind in the game completely. Facing a little adversity after a shaky start, third and 11. Under duress again and sacked back at the 17-yard line. Robert Kimdichi, who's going to play on Sundays, folks. Remember the name and the number. If there's one advantage Ole Miss has, it is up front with their defensive line. Great push from both sides, but Kimdichi comes from the other side to make the sack. This is reminiscent of the way Alabama dominated Mississippi State up front with nine sacks. That is a huge issue the Bulldogs have to correct right away. From the seven yard line, it's Logan Cook. Fair catch called back at the 32 yard line by Collins Moore. And once again, decent starting field possession for Chad Kelly. Ran for a touchdown on the last drive. He'll be back on the field when we come back to Starkville. Welcome back, everyone, to Davis Wade Stadium in Starkville, Mississippi. I'm Mark Jones alongside Rod Gilmore, Quinn Kessinick down to the field. The Rebels out to an early 7-0 lead. Courtesy of a touchdown run by Chad Kelly. Looking at first down and 10, their second possession here in the ball game. Jonesy, beware of the left side of the formation. They've got two dangerous receivers over there. Fumble. And Kelly going to lose about five yards on this play. All the way back to the 25. I think he just took his eye off of it. I think he was looking to get the ball out quickly on the zone read uh, option. And he just took his eye off of it. Fortunately, it bounced right back for him for Mississippi State. Kelly playing in his first egg bowl. Here at this time, he was winning a national title for... East Mississippi Community College nearby. And the longer he takes in the line of scrimmage, the more noise he's going to hear, too. <laughs> Play clock down to eight. Kelly fires wide open at the 35-yard line. Demorier Stringfellow, the transfer from Washington, out to the 42-yard line. They have a number of receivers. It makes it really difficult to play man coverage against Ole Miss. They want you to play man coverage. They like the matchup. They want to throw the ball deep if you give them man coverage. Third and one. And a cacophony of cowbells ringing down on the field. They blew up his first option, and he found the second one. Kelly complete to Jalen Walton. Great poise, Rod. What a job by Kelly to hang in there. He reads right away that they jumped his route, and he stayed with it and waited for Walton to sneak outside. Walton, the fourth leading receiver on this Ole Miss team as a running back. Kelly almost picked off, but it's caught by Treadwell. And Treadwell with another first down at the 30-yard line. 
Laquan Treadwell, the leading receiver in the SEC. Yeah, and he makes a great catch here as Peters misses it. It goes through his hands. Look at Treadwell come Ooh. back to the ball. That's NFL material, coming back to the football to make that play. Boy, Jamal Peters could have had six there, had a shot. First and ten, Ole Miss able to move the ball well here in the early part of the game. Jalen Walton, first down again, Ole Miss at the 13. Finally chopped down by Coleman. A 17-yard gain. And back up the line of scrimmage very quickly again. Kelly keeps it like he did on his touchdown run. This time stopped up at the nine-yard line by Tolando Cleveland, picked up four. Kelly's ability to run down here inside the 20 is a huge problem for Mississippi State. It forces them to single up with Treadwell. He makes himself a running option. He can throw it. It's a problem down here, and they don't have an answer to it right now. Treadwell split wide to the bottom of your screen. We talked about the height advantage they have. Kelly going to run it himself and tackled at the two-yard line. It'll be third and goal now. JT Gray making the tackle. But right now, they are running so many different things at Mississippi State. Pull the backside guard, run the zone option. They've got lots of choices down here. I I'd be surprised mm. if they didn't run it again down here with Kelly. Right now, Mississippi State is trying to guess. They gave him a first down on the spot. First and goal. Kelly hands it off between the tackles. That's Jalen Walton again. And Walton earning a hard yard that time. 5.43 to go here in the first quarter. And Jonesy, just when you thought it was bad enough to de deal with blockers, they bring in Liggins, a 300-pound <laughs> tight end. Six foot That's three. big. <laughs> 300 pounds in the backfield. So you're going to tell us to follow him and that's where the ball's going or wouldn't, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly rolls out into the end zone. Caught. Touchdown. Ole Miss Stringfellow. Wow, well, Quint mentioned the matchups in the red zone early on. Six foot two, Stringfeld. They've got three or four receivers that are very tall, facing five nine, five ten corners. Here's an effort into the corner against Brandon Bryan, who's 5'11. Six. And the Rebels have taken the air out of the stadium, folks. It's definitely silent. Oh, mess. Still has a legitimate shot. In fact, the winner of this game has a shot at a Sugar Bowl berth, assuming Florida eventually loses to Alabama or Florida State. Bulldogs punched in the gut here in the opening minutes of the first quarter. First and ten, Prescott. And the run pass option complete. To Deronia Wilson picks up six on the play. But how do the Bulldogs get on track and get in rhythm a little bit here? Patience, relaxing, taking the short passes as Prescott's doing. They're not giving them the deep ball. They're playing a too high safety look, keeping everything underneath. Got to take a deep breath and exhale sometimes. Relax, patience, stick with it. Second down and ten. Prescott under heat again, this time escaping though. Barely picked off at the 40. Bridges. And he's going to have a pick six on senior day in Starkville. That's how he rolls. We just talked about patience. Relax, don't force it. Dak Prescott forces this. He's running for his life, and instead of throwing it away, he tries to squeeze one in there, and look who's there. Bridges sees it the entire way, steps in front, 
And there's your pick six. Another touchdown off of a turnover. And Mullen, the offensive mastermind behind their scheme, talking to the orchestrator of the offense, and they're cooking up some mess down there on the sidelines. Well, they're, they're, this. they're cooking up a defensive line that is really winning up front right now. And Prescott is running for his life. And instead of waiting and playing the next play, he's trying to make something happen. You said it, Rod. It's patience or lack thereof right now by Dak Prescott, the best player in program history, trying to author a better ending than the one that's emerging right now. Put your hands. The early storyline of this game has been that defense for Ole Miss with 14 points off of two Mississippi State turnovers. From the three, it's Donald Gray. Found the seam. All the way out to the 37. Kenducci already with a sack up front. Prescott over the middle, complete to the 44-yard line. Fred Ross on the reception. Got about seven. Second down. Ole Miss brought four that last time and ran a stunt. They picked it up. That's a good sign for Mississippi State's offensive line. Remember, Quinn said that Rufus Warren not feeling well, will not play tonight. He's the starting tackle. Second and three. Prescott going to tuck it under and run. Gets the first down, has a lot of real estate. Hurdling one tackler down to the 10. He jumped right over the top of Mike Hilton. Thirty-four yards for the first down. Well, they had a huge lane, only four rush. They played man coverage, and now they're in business on the 10. Williams in the backfield. And Prescott brought down by Mike Hilton. It's going to be a loss on the play. Hilton was the guy that got jumped over by Prescott a moment ago. This time made sure. You know, I think I'd take the timeout at the end of the quarter if I were in Mississippi State. A little extra time to come up with the play you want on second down here. With a quarter coming up, they're going to run one. Pass complete. Down to the four-yard line, out of the backfield. Brandon Holloway again, working against Tony Bridges, and that's going to be the end of the first 15 minutes of play here on Senior Night. For the greatest player in Mississippi State history. A lot of emotion swirling. He's off to a rough start with a fumble and a pick six. But three quarters of football to go, folks. Stick around. Here in Starkville, Mississippi. And during the break, the appreciative fans here in Starkville. Flashlights spelling out Dak for Dak Prescott on senior day. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That's really cool. There's a community that embraced him in his time of need when his mother passed a couple of years ago. He's the one that said, we don't have fans, we have family. Third and goal here, though. This is Dak's time. He always gets the ball down here in these situations. Wilson is the middle receiver down at the bottom of your screen. He stands 6'5". Number one, Delonia Wilson. Prescott going to keep it. And he stopped up short. Rod, do you go for it on fourth down here, or do you take the field goal? That's an emotional decision. I don't think you make that right. I think you got to get points on the board to get off the schneid. Get something on the board and feel good about a possession. So DJ Jones makes the tackle, and that brings the field goal unit on. Weston Graves is 12 of 15 on the season. Field goal from 22 yards out. And Graves knocks it through. The Bulldogs would have preferred a touchdown. They'll take three, though. You know, there is a possibility that Chad Kelly only plays one season at Ole Miss. He made a comment the other day that, you know, he hasn't made a decision, but 
his family situation might lead him to leave out of this season as an NFL prospect. Great point, Rod. And it'll come back out on the touchback. Right with the USFL uh, Houston squad and the uh, Buffalo Bills. As Chad makes a nice run for first down. Picks up 12 as we go down to Quint. Mark Rod mentioned Kelly's family situation. His dad, Kevin, uh, manages a grocery store and has to work some awful long shifts. His mom, Charlene, is a teacher. They live in Buffalo. She commutes to Rochester. So, you know, getting that NFL paycheck certainly would put his family in a better situation. Yeah, good point, Quint. Kelly going to pass this time. Still perfect. At the 38-yard line, Walton out of the backfield. Yeah, Kelly said that, you know, my dad can't even watch my games unless he comes down to Oxford, Mississippi here because he's got to work most of the time. Look, if Kelly were to come out, they might have six or more guys drafted this year and three or more in the first round. A lot of talent on that field for the Rebels. Reflecting in their lead right now. Catch made complete. That's Cody Four and Mel Kuyper says this <laughs> and Todd McShay says that. Well, you're, you're talking about three guys who could be the top 10, 11 picks overall. And that doesn't even include Kelly or Ingram, the tight end, if he comes out, who I think is an NFL player as well. There's Fredwell, who a year ago at this time couldn't even play in this game after suffering that catastrophic injury. Do you think Kelly can hear right now? <laughs> Third and five. Tucks it under. And finds his man at just beyond midfield. Four picks up another Rebel first down. A nine-yard gain. And Kelly was poised in the pocket again. Extended the play. He bought time. He extended the play until he could find his man core for the first down. That is fantastic quarterback play. Clutch quarterback play. Rod, he's nine for nine so far. For the receiver screen, Treadwell. And they're going to say that it hit the turf incomplete. So thus his first Aaron pass of the night. That third down play, we take a look at this ball that hits the ground. Fredwell not quite able to come up with it. But that third down play with Kelly shows you his importance as a quarterback. Clutch, he is the 10th rated quarterback in the country in terms of performance in the clutch with an 82 rating. Second and 10, Hakeem Judd in the backfield. Kelly going to take off. Broke one tackle and slides in safely at about the 41. I mentioned a year ago at this time, Kelly was playing for East Mississippi Community College. Had almost 4,000 yards passing, 47 touchdowns. His team went 12 0 and won a national junior college title. It's a good players come through that, JC. Picked up nine on the last play, third and one. They've done well on third down tonight. And they pick up another first down at the 36, Judd. This Bulldog defense has been on the field a long time tonight, albeit it's still early. Well, Kelly is out dacking Dak. I mean, he's shown more legs tonight than Dak, which is a surprise. You, you knew he could throw as well as Dak, but it's his legs that's been the real difference tonight. Kelly downfield finds his receiver, Stringfellow. Touchdown Rebels made it look easy. That's two, and they're cooking still. You want to see a dart thrown on time at the right spot to allow his receiver to go. Watch this bullet. In between guys, perfectly thrown to Stringfellow. Didn't have to break stride. No angle by any defender because the ball was so well placed. Just add the arm onto the legs right now. 
Ole Miss has a lot of talent on the offensive side of that football and on defense as well. Hugh Freeze has had some very highly rated recruiting classes, albeit Stringfellow, a transfer from Washington. This isn't the script that they thought was written or predetermined in Starkville. Stringfellow helping a fellow himself. Welcome back, everyone, to ESPN College Football, part of ESPN's Rivalry Series presented by Jiffy Lou. Ole Miss shocking Starkville right now, leading 28-3, just underway here in the second quarter. The Bulldogs need to play, and they continue to get rocked off their feet. With 5.04 to go in the first half, it's been all Ole Miss. Prescott hands it off. And that's Deer getting to the corner for the first down. Let's go down to Quint. Mark, Mississippi State representatives told me he was taken inside for evaluation of a leg injury. I see no new tape on his ankles or his knees. In fact, he had red knee pads on earlier in this game that he's taken off. Bouncing around during that last time out, he looks fine. Going to have to change what's on the scoreboard. Prescott completes it to Ross. And Ross gets back some of the good yards. Mike Hilton has been ubiquitous tonight. He has been all over the field. Another tackle. And emerging as one of the quasars for this land shark defense of Ole Miss. He's had a stellar career. A Jim Thorpe Award finalist. Semi-finalist this season. And an opportunity for Mississippi State to get points on the board here. They've been very disconcerted up front. They've got the penalties as well. Out of the backfield, pass complete to Shumpert. And Shumpert hit and brought down. No gain, maybe a, a yard on the play. And Second Mississippi charge, State half, looking at a timeout here with 18 seconds to go. Third down and 12. Three receivers out to the top of your screen. Prescott. They light him up and bring him down. Another sack Channing for the Rebels. Ward, yeah. Channing Ward got there. His third sack of the season with seven seconds to go in the first half. Yeah, and Ward's been in because Fidel Brown has been banged up lately. And Ward's having another good game up front along with the other defensive linemen. The Bulldogs trying to author their own resurrection in the second half. Down 25 points. Stay tuned for our Outback Steakhouse Halftime Report when Quint will have Coach Hugh Freeze right now back to the studio. Fellas, take it away. Coach, what do you think has been most responsible for Chad Kelly's success in this game? Well, he, he's played that well most of the year. You know, the uh, last last few games he's been very, very good. He's used his legs wisely. He's taking care of the ball for the most part. Missed a couple of uh, throws I thought we had there that we got to get in and talk about, but... He's just a great competitor and love the way he's preparing during the week. What will you emphasize with your coaching staff and, and your team now with a 25-point lead? Uh, it's a 60-minute game, and number 15 on their team is one of the best that's ever played in this conference. You better, We better play 60 minutes. Thank you, Coach. Under the lights at Davis Wade Stadium, you're watching the SEC on ESPN. And the 112th edition of Ole Miss against Mississippi State has been all Rebels. So far, they lead 28 to three mark jones alongside rod gilmore quint kesnick down on the field rod when you look at the numbers chad kelly 12 of 15 passing dak prescott 16 of 20 big difference though one is impactful the other one hasn't been it was an emotional first half first quarter for dak prescott and the turnovers and like i think hurt them chad kelly was great in the first half i think the key going forward right now is defensively for mississippi state their defense has to make a stand, a three and out. They've got to help the offense with a short field or something. That is the only way that the Bulldogs will get back into this ball game. Their defense has to make a stand somewhere. Facing their biggest deficit of the season at 25 points. And Kelly is going to get the ball first here to start the third quarter as the Bulldogs will kick off. Ole Miss last one here in Starkville in 2003. Over a decade ago. A lot of home cooking. Yep. The home team has won 10 of the last 11 games in this series. And you can bet that at halftime that Prescott and some of those other 15 seniors imploring effort 
across the board. They'll come back out. As, let's go down to Quint. Mark, uh, Dan Mullen really wasn't in the mood to talk. Uh, this is uh, obviously a situation that he did not predict. I asked him about the offensive line. I, I think what is most frustrating, aside from losing one-on-one -on -one battles, is the penalties, especially on first down. Uh, meanwhile, Hugh Freeze, I asked him with this lead, how do you approach play calling? He said, well, 60-minute game. We're facing number 15 in Dak Prescott, one of the best players in the history of this conference. The, uh, what the play calling is like here, Quint. Uh, they're conservative or not. They're going to run it with Jalen Walton on first down. Going to lose a little bit. Richie Brown making the stop on the play. A loss of three. That's a good sign because Manny Diaz, a D coordinator, decided to roll the dice on first down, bring pressure, and create a second and long. That's going to be the, the recipe in the second half. Uh, Diaz told us that Richie Brown, amongst others, had to play well against the run. Kelly's pass tipped to the line of scrimmage. Incomplete intended for Corey Coe. Well, give credit to Diaz. He's decided, hey, it's not worth worrying about being beat deep in single coverage. First two plays, pressure, tight man coverage. Cody Core, the intended receiver on that last one. There's a look at Diaz. Dude, he's got up his sleeve here in terms of adjustments in the second half. We've already gotten a little preview. Walton in motion. Kelly with the pump fake, and he's brought down. So it's going to be three and out to start the third quarter for that Mississippi State defense as they get off the field in a rush. Ryan Brown with the tackle on Chad Kelly. Well, another little change up. They went with the spy right there. You'll see 45 Gray. He is just shadowing Kelly and gets enough of him to stop him on that third down. Leeson with the punt. Remember, he had a shank near the end of the second quarter. Ross on the punt return, trying to make a play. Ross got across midfield and into Ole Miss territory at the 46-yard line. A 37-yard punt and a 16-yard return. So Dak Prescott is going to start with his best field position of the night. There's a look at their first half possessions. Yeah, that is, that's pretty bad. Three points, a couple turnovers. Look at the four sacks. Those sacks, that disruption by that defensive line tore apart this offense. First down is key. They need positive yards. All the way motioning out of the backfield. Prescott escapes. Going to run it himself and tiptoes out of bounds at the 40-yard line. A that game is, of six. That is Dak making it happen because they are still losing the battle up front. Too many guys in the backfield harassing Prescott. Now remember, they're missing their two starting tackles. Second down and four from the 40. Gets it out quickly to Ross. Ross makes a move and picks up the first down. He's gonna move the chain, spot it just inside the 35-yard line. Remember, we talked about this in the first half. Ole Miss is giving them the short passes. The question is, can they be patient enough to take those things until they can get a touchdown? And they've been impatient at times. A throwback. Go for the trick play. Caught! At the nine, Ross, first and goal, Mississippi State. Hey, how about the throw? That was intentionally thrown, underthrown, because Ross wasn't open. Prescott underthrows this. Had he thrown that down the field, that's picked. 25-yard gain, first and goal. Prescott going to run it, put his hat down, took a hit at the two. It'll be second down and goal. C.J. Johnson, the fifth-year senior, making the stop on the play. When the Bulldogs get inside the 15-yard line, Dak Prescott normally handles the football. Quarterback draw, speed option, quarterback power. He's 230 pounds and can take care of the football down here. Team's leading rusher. Out of the shotgun. This time he launches... 
Not sure whether he got in or not. They're spotting it short of the end zone. Breland speaks. Met Prescott at the peak. Knocked him off. Wow, what an effort here by Peaks getting up there. That's a great tackle. Inches short of that goal line. After video review, it is a touchdown. The ball broke the goal line play. With the game clock out there, it took 11 54. 1 1 5 4 on the game clock. The Bulldogs with their first touchdown of the night. Took over two quarters to get there. 11.54 to go in the third quarter. That was Mississippi State's opening drive of the second half. The extra point good. And the margin down to 18 points on senior night. You kind of get a feeling that... The party just got started here in Starkville. A lot of work to do. And welcome back to ESPN College Football, part of ESPN's Rivalry Series, presented by Jiffy Lou. Max Prescott with Mississippi State's first touchdown of the game moments ago, and the place is starting to rock. Come back out to the 20-yard line. Incomplete. Treadwell had his eyes downfield. It'll be second down and 10, Rod. So, partner, what's happened now is that Mississippi State has turned up the heat on first down defensively, bringing pressure, playing man. The answer for Ole Miss is what you just saw. Get the ball out to the one-on-one -on -one guys like Treadwell. It's worth the risk if you're Mississippi State. Get the feeling that Bulldog defense is all in right now. <laughs> Kelly has time this time and finds his receiver downfield for the first down. Evan Engram, the talented tight end with his first reception of the night rod. We've watched him on film oh, all week. He's good. He's fantastic. He is a mismatch problem and the place where Kelly will look when there's single coverage because he's too fast for linebackers, too big for safety. First down and 10 out of the 42. Little play action by Kelly downfield. Another completion. This time he found Stringfellow, who has a touchdown catch tonight. Another first down for the Rebels, a pickup of 19. Bulldogs have backed off of the first down pressure, and it's hurt them that last play. Will they go back to pressure on first down? It's a run to Walton, and Walton picks up about seven. Jalen Walton had that Game-changing 91-yard dash for a touchdown last year in the third quarter in Oxford, Mississippi, which really turned the tide of the game in the old Mrs. Favor. That's Nick James limping off the field. James got the start tonight in place of Nelson Adams. Second and three. Walton again. Boy, he's got some great feet and picks up the first down just shy of the 25 yard line. Tolando Cleveland finally making the stop after the seven yard game. At 160 pounds, he better have great feet out there because. Hold on, he's listed at 172. What are you, you talking you, about? Are you right? buying that? <laughs> Come on. You saw him before the game. He's now yeah. 172, maybe 165. Okay, I'll give that to you. Kelly hands it off to Walton. Got to the edge and forced out of bounds just shy of the 20 by Beniquez Brown. So the Rebels have taken a little bit of steam out of that Bulldog defense. Moving the ball downfield. 
Pick up a five by Walton. Walton spins out of traffic and was brought down at about the 13 yard line. The third down coming up. Nelson Adams making the stop. Well, huge third down, and if you roll the dice and bring the pressure, you're going to have Treadwell again in single coverage, and you've got the risk of Kelly scrambling on you. Treadwell split to the top of your screen. He's number one. On the receiver screen, he makes the catch. But the Bulldogs defense read it. How about Calhoun? Anticipated, read the three-step of Kelly and drove that right away. This is a fantastic play. Look at him. He sees it right now and just explodes in there to make the play. Big time play by Calhoun. Arguably their best cover corner. Taking on an even bigger leadership role for some of those losses. And that's wide. It's a huge win for the Bulldog defense. Wonderlick missing from 33. Missed earlier from 38. So well, what do we have here? Looks like they had a little malfunction at the junction here, Rod. Yeah, didn't get it down completely cleanly and then pushed it to the right. And the Bulldogs, they're alive. Look at some of the wonderful history in this Egg Bowl rivalry. First played in 1901. The Golden Egg Trophy began being contested for back in 1927. First down and 10. Prescott. Can you take a shot here? Complete over the middle. Out to the 44 to Fred Ross. All right, back here. Prescott suddenly catching fire. Wilson with the catch. And another Mississippi State first down. He's reading the coverage as well. They're showing him a two deep and then spinning out of it. And he comes back and sees the safety to throw a post pattern right in front of him. Holloway on the swing pass. Maybe got a yard. And uh, Rod, it really speaks to player development here at Mississippi State, doesn't it? Absolutely. You have to believe that guys will work hard and get better and that you actually can coach them up, that you know what you're doing. If those yeah. two things come together, you don't always have to have the five-star recruit to generate great players. Second down and eight. Has a great work ethic. Improved his balance and footwork and using it there. Got a good block and is chopped down right around the 10-yard line. Let's go down to Clint. Jonesy Prescott's late mom, Peggy, during that recruiting process, stood across the table from Dan Mullen and said, I'm going to hold you accountable. My son better get, better get his degree. Well, he's going to earn his master's in December. Yeah, great work in the classroom, too. Good job, Clint. First and goal for the Bulldogs. Incomplete. That one seemed to slip out of his hand, intended for Fred Ross. Looks over to the sideline, says, I got it. 20 friends and family members watching Prescott play his final game here at Davis Wade Stadium. Mullen talked about the tipping point in his career. It was probably that 2013 Egg Bowl game we saw. They went on to win the Liberty Bowl against Rice in wake of that. And he was a different quarterback. Second and goal. Right there in the slot. That's the guy I'd be thinking about. Incomplete at the four. Intended for Darian Hutcherson I, I working against Chief Brown. That matchup with Wilson in the slot at six foot five to me is a mismatch. He's working against the safety. And I think if, if the coaches in the booth for Mississippi State are looking at it, they're coming back and trying to get that matchup again. He leads them with nine touchdown catches this year. Third and goal. Wilson is matched up against him. Prescott on the move. Slings it. Tipped and incomplete. And once again, it looked like Mike Hilton was in on the coverage. 
and may have even tipped it. What do you do yeah. here, Roddy? You going for the field goal? Ah, uh, you got to have points here, and you've got momentum on your side. Keep, keep biting into that lead. Keep doing that. But Hilton, he, he's having a heck of a day. He just deflected that pass. He had seven tackles mm. in the first half, a couple tackles for losses. Guy who's really finishing out his career at Ole Miss the right way. Yeah, he's having a good night tonight. Fourth down coming up. 27-yard field goal attempt. By Weston Graves made one earlier from 22. And knocks this one through to make it a 15-point game. Down to a two-possession game as the Bulldogs try to slice into that deficit. 5.42 to go in the third. When we come back. Dan Mullen's team has been slightly resurrected here. There has been a third quarter insurrection by the Bulldogs, which has seen them come into that lead, making it just a 15-point game now. <laughs> First and ten. Kelly keeps it, a little bootleg action complete. Out to the 43-yard line, he finds Adebojo, one of his trusted receivers, picks up 18. Adebojo had a 57-yard touchdown catch on the first play of the game last week against LSU. First, Been relatively quiet. Yeah. yeah. Well, first down attempt to get negative plays by the defense. And Ole Miss responding, trying to get the ball to their playmaker. Kelly with the play fake, downfield has a man, and it's caught! What a grab by Engram. His second reception of the night. We told you about his agility and skill. Here's an example. Fantastic hands. Look at him. Backing away, hangs in there. It's always a bad matchup with him. That was close. I wonder if he had his hands and tucked it away before he got the feet down. They're not going to look at this. A 26-yard gain. On first and ten, a pass seemed to be batted the line of scrimmage. Treadwell made the catch, and he's brought down at the 31 by Brandon Bryant. Bryant, remember, replacing Kendrick Market, one of those seniors not able to play tonight. He suffered an ACL injury earlier in the season. Both Market and Will Redmond being replaced in the secondary. Second down and five for Ole Miss. Kelly going to run with it. And they string him out, brought him down at the 31 by Richie Brown. The leading tackler on that Mississippi State defense. Loss of one. Third down coming up. Oh, Jonesy, the pressure on first down created this third down opportunity. Now, can you play solid defense? Or do you roll the dice again? I don't think they're going to pressure here. You don't want to take a sack if you're Chad Kelly either. Gets rid of it quickly. And incomplete through the arms of Evan Ingram. Fourth down coming up. Cedric Giles was there defending. And do you really trust your place kicker after he's missed twice from makeable range tonight? I, I think you have to take that chance. You have confidence in your kicker. You still have a 15-point lead. Mm. You pat him on the back and say, hey, we'll have some fun. 0 for 2 tonight from 38 and 33, both wide. This one from 48. His career long is 47. And he got it. A new career long for Gary Wunderlich. At a very timely moment. Back with more after this. Well, Wonderlich finally got off the schneid. Now one for three tonight in the field goal department. But this is a different Bulldog team in the second half. Trying to mount a comeback. This is Holloway. 
And Holloway stopped up at about the 25. Prescott, meanwhile, sacked back at the 20-yard line by Kim Dietschy, his second one of the night. Here's that guy. That's why the NFL scouts drool at his game take. He is so quick with that first step. Never had a chance. All-American candidate now with three and a half sacks on the season. Prescott on the move again. Kandichi in pursuit. And Prescott leaping forward. Hamilton lost his helmet. He'll have to sit a play out. That's Woodrow Hamilton. Third down coming up for the Bulldogs. On the gain of nine by Prescott. Prescott last year took this program to unprecedented heights. Mississippi State was ranked number one for the first time in school history. Third and eight. He needs a clutch play here. Blitz coming. And he's sacked back at the 16-yard line. Kim Dietschy says, it's my night. They Got ran, by Calhoun. They ran a stunt from Prescott's right side. Couldn't pick it up. Kim Dietschy came underneath. Outside, they ran a stunt. Too much pressure. C.J. Johnson getting in there as well. The he difference is. has been that defensive line. Six There's sacks. No Remember, Alabama had nine against down. them. That land shark defense patrolling the turf tonight. Playing the role of the ultimate predator out there. Fourth down in a quick three and out. Collins Moore standing at his own 36 yard line. He's going to get an opportunity here. Wheels out of trouble. And he's brought down at the 35. A four yard return on that 49 yard punt. Getting a breather here on third and long. Kelly fires complete and a first down. Great catch and effort after the catch by DeMaurier Stringfellow. DeMaurier giving him a little bit more. Watch the effort. Fights off the tackle, keeps his balance, picks up the first down. I mean, that is just a lot of want to to get that first down. That's the end of the third that quarter of play. Quarter. Stringfellow, the transfer from Washington. Finding out what this Egg Bowl is all about as his first timer Chad Kelly. There's a look at our game summary tonight. But the big story are the sacks by that Ole Miss defense. In particular, Robert Kimdichi with a couple tonight and various quarterback hurries and pressure. As we get started here in the fourth quarter. It'll be first down and 10 for Ole Miss. Jordan Wilkins in the backfield beside quarterback Chad Kelly. Wilkins bursting between the tackles. Nice sprint and run out to the 46. He got seven. Nice play on first down. Gives him a little bit of options moving forward. Ole Miss coming into the game tonight with a record of eight and three. Remember, folks, at stake. Second place in the SEC West, and potentially if Alabama goes to the national championship college football playoff, one of those four teams, then the next team potentially do the Sugar Bowl. And second and three, Kelly fires. A little miscommunication there between his receiver, the Morier Stringfellow, who's in a a little personal battle there with Giles. Just to follow up on your point about that Sugar Bowl, the second highest rated SEC team, and that arguably could be the winner of this game if Florida loses to Florida State or loses to Alabama, could wind up in the Sugar Bowl. So, real possibility for the winner tonight. Third and three. They were sitting on that fumble. Kelly scooped it up miraculously. 
after putting it on the ground. Cedric Giles had a chance to scoop and score, but Kelly instead saw it bounce his way fortuitously right into his arms. Sometimes the ball just bounces your way. Giles <laughs> had a chance to jump on it, tried to grab it with one hand, and Kelly, as he's been all night, right place, right time. You talked about chaos and opportunity. <laughs> yep. That, that was an opportunity yep. right there. There it was. First and ten. Kelly hands it off to Wilkins, still on its feet. Cuts back. One man to beat for Wilkins. Touchdown, Rebels. 39 yards for the score. We talked about rolling the dice, pressure on first down. That's exactly what they brought. Watch the blitz inside and watch the great blocking, particularly by Cooper, 74, seals off one of the inside backers, and Wilkins cuts his way to the outside, and that might be the dagger. That sure stole the momentum. In Ole Miss's favor, that was the third rushing touchdown of the season for Jordan Wilkins, the fourth of his career. And in any sport, folks, if your name is Jordan, oh, you can ball, ball hard. Real momentum swear when it seemed like the Bulldogs were getting back into the game. Scott said that part of the reason he came back for a season, a senior year, as he completes another pass, is that he wanted to defeat Ole Miss. Darian Hutcherson making that catch. Well, he, he, he's had a tremendous career, and tonight's results should not lessen or dampen that. I mean, this was an incredibly emotional night for him and the community. I mean, how about the letter he wrote to the fans of Mississippi State this week? Uh, great uh, outpouring of heartfelt sentiment. This is Deer. Picks up enough for the first down. Let's go to Quint downstairs. Mark, you know, I found it so refreshing to read that letter. How Dak was appreciative of his teammates, the coaches, this university and the city, and the role in changing him from a boy to a man. You mentioned it earlier, lost his mom and grandfather uh, while here at Mississippi State. Uh, the outpouring of support from this community has carried this young man. A great relationship between him and the residents of Starkville as Fred Ross, his favorite receiver, makes a catch. 20 family members in attendance tonight, and uh, amongst them, his father, Nathaniel, aunts and uncles and other relatives, and uh, dad watching pensively at the rail. would be perhaps his greatest comeback if he could lead Mississippi State down the field a few times here. Brandon Holloway with a nice gain for the Bulldogs. And, and in these situations, you don't worry about the score. You worry about the next first down and scoring quickly. And then you wait to see what happens. But you have to keep pushing it. And that's where his focus is right now, is not the amount of the deficit, but just the first score. <laughs> Well, that was a quick get off on the edge by the defensive end on the, that side of the field. But Holloway made the catch for a four yard gain. C.J. Johnson was in the backfield by the time Prescott got the snap. Look at this. Yeah, quick first step huh. by number 10 on the left side of the screen. Yeah, Johnson, part of that talented defense for the Rebels. Second down and six. the loose slips and falls at the 12 may have been able to get a few more yards but lost his footing picked up 13. he's been effective in space you think about continuing that and you think about what your two-point play is gets it out on time 
Williams to the edge. Check that deer. Did he get in? He did. Touchdown! Malik Deer. Great block by Morrow out there, and also Little Holloway at 165 pounds, keeping Bridges out of the way, so Deer gets into the end zone. 13-yard touchdown run. Huh, so they're, they're actually thinking of going for one here instead of the two. A little surprising. Two would have made it a couple of touchdowns and a field goal. A little over nine and a half to go. Prescott with a 24th touchdown pass of the season on senior night. Back after this. Hey, partner, about that non-attempt for a two-point conversion. Yeah. I, I think once you get to the fourth quarter, you think about possessions. I'd rather be down 17 than 18. Your worst case scenario is that if you don't get it, you still need three touchdowns. Mm. I'd rather need two touchdowns and a field goal. Right now, uh, not 17, but an 18-point deficit, as you point out. And I should point out that the chart says down by 19, go by go two. two. Yeah. First and 10, they're going to hand it off. That's Jalen Walton, and a nice gain of eight. But a great rivalry, one of the better rivalries, longer-lasting rivalries in college football, the 112th edition of Mississippi State against Ole Miss. How about the intensity of it? An hour before kickoff, folks were in here yelling and screaming yeah. and ringing those cowbells. It is a special place. A little bootleg action. Kelly finds his man, Treadwell. Laquan Treadmill. Makes another reception. You know, coming into the game tonight, he had five consecutive games with over 100 yards receiving. Flag on the play, though. Personal foul. Face mask. Number 45 in the defense. 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down. That's against JT Gray. With 7.20 to go. I was talking about Stringfellow. Pardon me, Treadwell. He has four catches tonight for 24 yards. But even when he's not making big plays, you've got to account for number one right there mm -hmm. so much that it skews things a little bit, right, Rod? Absolutely. He has an impact no matter what. A couple of guys going his way. You're afraid to call blitzes because of the single coverage because he can make you pay. Yeah. Talk about his numbers and his impact last year. To a man, even the coaching staff say that his injury last year had a rather demoralizing, deflating effect on the team they ended up their season losing 42 to 3 in the Chick-fil-A Bowl to TCU. And he might come back and win the Belinikoff Award this year as the top receiver in college football. Came back a little bit lighter, much more explosive. Leading the conference in receiving coming into the game tonight. This is Walton. Second down coming up. There's a look at the three finalists for the Blitnikoff Award. And if you think about what's happened the last couple of days, Coleman had a rough night in that monsoon against TCU, <laughs> and Dotson was injured the last couple of weeks. Treadwell has been the healthiest and the most productive down the stretch here, so he's got a pretty good chance to win that award. The number one rated wide receiving prospect, according to Todd McShay. On second and five, they're going to run it again to Walton. Couldn't get to the edge and is brought down for a loss of one. As Quint pointed out, it, it's about running out clock now. It's the four-minute offense. You get into your four-minute offense to chew up the last four minutes of the game. You can start that a bit early to try to get there. Now, from Mississippi State, it is all about making something happen on third down. You've got to take the chance to get the ball back to your defense. You can't sit back and bleed to death. Yeah, Rod, the visiting team has won only once in the last 11 meetings in this series. Ole Miss 6 of 11 on third downs tonight. Walton goes in motion. He gets the pass out of the backfield. 
Turns the Jets on, but he's going to be stopped up short. And fourth down emerging now for Ole Miss. Richie Brown making the tackle. Time out of the half. 5.06 to go. And perhaps one last gasp effort for the Bulldogs as the egg trophy on ice inside the Rebels locker room. Will it stay there? It's fun of the night. The Gleason. The Gleason has struggled at times tonight. First down and ten. Prescott gets away somehow and slides safely at the 41. A missed tackle on the play by C.J. Johnson. And to that point, it, it would be a shame if what's been built the last three or four years falls apart because of what could be on the horizon. Prescott leaving, all the stars at Ole Miss leaving, two hot coaching prospects that others will go after. It could all change after this season. Another carry by Holloway. Here's Coach Mullen had an interesting take on things uh, yesterday in our discussions. He said sometimes, you know, when, when your name is mentioned for a lot of things, you're usually not the guy. Yeah. <laughs> well, re some, rest assured that he and Freeze are popular coaches, yeah. and people know what they can do. They have built something special at their respective programs. The catch made by Wilson. And Wilson stepping out of bounds back at the 15. Going to be first down and 10, and he's shaken up. A pickup of 37 on the play. Prescott, back shoulder fade incomplete. It'll be second and 10 with a little over two minutes to go. Gray was working against Tony Bridges. It's unlikely, but imagine if you will. If everyone comes back to Ole Miss next year, Kelly comes back at quarterback. Kandichi doesn't leave. Treadwell doesn't leave. Imagine how good and loaded they'll be next season. Over the middle, incomplete. Pass intended for Fred Ross. Well, I'm sure they'll listen to those evaluations. NFL Evaluation Committee and speak with their respective coaches and families and make the make the decision but if it comes back first round uh, I'm with you first round grade says see ya yeah, cut that check on third and ten Prescott comes back the other way caught by Gray Gray brought down short of the first down by about a yard and a half it'll be fourth down coming up for the Bulldogs In all likelihood, if Ole Miss can improve to nine and three. And this may be Dak Prescott's last play in this stadium. Into the end zone, caught. And if it is his last play, partner, an appropriate way to punctuate the best career perhaps ever in school history. Prescott to Malik Deer for the touchdown. Well thrown ball right on time as soon as Deer turns his head around. Ball is right there away from the defender. Touchdown. It's just a shame for Dak Prescott and company that such an emotional night. They got off to such a bad start and Ole Miss really took advantage of it in that first quarter. Second touchdown of the night for Malik Deer makes it an 11 point game now. It's interesting, Coach Frieza sent a good luck note to Gus Malzon in Auburn a couple of days ago and uh, didn't quite work out for the Auburn Tigers tonight. But the two of them have a friendship that predates the game tonight in the Iron Bowl between those two schools, Auburn and Alabama. 
He did say go War Eagle after yeah, leaving he, his weekly press conference. He found a way to say War Eagle. <laughs> <laughs> Onside kick almost recovered by Mississippi State. Still loose. They had a great opportunity earlier in the sequence. It looked like Walton got on it. Don't sleep, folks. We've seen some incredibly crazy finishes, improbable finishes this year in college football. Talk about Michigan, Michigan State, Georgia Tech, Florida State, Miami Duke. They had a shot at it right, right there. there. That was the first shot at it. Ben Beniquas Brown. Yeah. And Mullen knew it. After it's gone 10 yards, the receiving team recovered. First down. It's going to be first down for the Rebels. Well, his godfather, Jim Kelly, the Hall of Famer, will be proud of his nephew, Chad Kelly, tonight. Putting the finishing touches here on a rare road win in this Egg Bowl series. Walton running for the first down or close to it. On senior night here for Dak Prescott and 15 seniors. Things not working out the way that they would have scripted it. But it really doesn't discount the impact that he'll make beyond the football field here in Starkville, Mississippi, from the campus to the restaurants to the local hospitals to the parks where they play football. They'll remember more than tonight as the trophy emerges from the Ole Miss Rebel locker room. Walton. Springing loose and knocked out of bounds inside the 15 at about the 13. Oh, don't you love trophy games, though? Always a great <laughs> sight at the end of the game when the trophy comes out and there's the real or the fake stare yeah. down <laughs> about transferring the trophy, if it's going to be transferred. And it's a credit to the two schools tonight that this game has come off without incident in light of the fact that emotions run and tensions run extremely high during this kind of series. First and 10, and they're in their victory formation. Ole Miss can improve to 9-3 and three on the season and still pondering the possibility of a berth in the Sugar Bowl. The trophy will stay in Oxford, Mississippi, for another year, their first win here in Starkville since 2003 when they won that game 31 to nothing. C.J. Johnson, the fifth year senior, trotting it around the field. And Dak Prescott will see his career come to an end here in Starkville on an inauspicious note. As we go downstairs to Quint for more. Thanks, Mark. Uh, Coach Freeze enjoying some wonderful hugs with his family. First of all, the defensive line. How would you best describe their performance tonight? Well, I, I thought that was our advantage. I really did, and um, thought they played well. I mean, we get you're gonna give up some to, to Dak. He's just a he's that that competitor. But uh, our D line played well. In your eyes, what was most impressive with the play of Chad Kelly? Uh, just you know, he plays within the system most of the time. He made a few mistakes, but. Uh, he is such a competitor and he prepares very, very well. What's an Egg Bowl trophy victory mean for you? It means, uh, it means everything to our, to our fans, I assure you, and to our program. Why is that? Well, it's, uh, it's in-state, man. We live with each other. We go to church with each other. It's just uh, it's so important to our program. Congratulations, Coach. Thank you. Coach Freeze now 3-1 and one against Mississippi State. His counterpart, Dan Mullen, falling to 4-3. and three. The 112th edition of Ole Miss and Mississippi State goes to Chad Kelly and the Rebels.